Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahqam SOS, the show that discusses the Islamic duties and practices by the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me, like always, is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Let us continue our discussion that we were having on uh, ghusl. Sheikhna, there's more than one type of way to perform ghusl, is there not? Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin. Um, there are two types of ghusl. Um, the one is the sequential ghusl, which is known as the tartibi, sequential. And the second type is the ghusl of immersion, by immersion. So basically um, diving inside uh, a pond of water, for example, you have enough space and enough water to dive all your body inside uh, the water. So these two types of, of also either the sequential or by diving. Uh, of course, by beginning the ghusl with the niyyah, as I've mentioned, with the intention for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting uh, close to Allah by this ghusl, that will validate the ghusl and if you follow the stages of ghusl, be it the tartib or the irtimasi, you can come up with um, uh, a pure body, inshallah, um, from uh, the cause of janab. Now, with regard to the sequential, by beginning of uh, the ghusl by the niyyah, as usual, because it's ibad, as I mentioned, it's a worship, so you have to have the intention. First thing to begin with, is to wash the head and the neck of the individual and to make sure that um, that person washes uh, the head and make sure that the water reaches the skin unlike the wudu wiping uh -huh. on the head that you have to just, just to wash, uh, sorry, just to wipe on um, the hair of the head but now for the ghusl you have to make sure that the water reaches the skin of the body, the whole body Mm -hmm. And um, because the hadith says with this regard, تحت كل شعرة جنابه, and every hairline there's a جناب, which mm -hmm. means the skin has been affected as well by this okay. act of uh, جناب ejaculation. So you have to make sure that the water reaches the skin itself. So by washing the head, you make sure that you wash all the external parts which are visible by eyes, let's say the ears, around the ears, and um, any visible part, again like the wudu, the lips, after you, you close them together, and um, basically you don't have to wash inside the nose or inside the, the mouth, and with regard to the neck as well, you wash all the neck around, and then you move to the right section of the body, the right side of the body and you wash the right side of the body so the hand, the full arm and the right section of the body you wash it up all, all the way from the shoulder all the way down to the uh, toes of the tips and even uh, to the end um, and um, you go to the back to the left section again you wash the left side of the body the arms, the hands and the all, all, all section of the left side of the body as well, from the shoulder all the way to the tips of the toes of, of the feet. And of course you wash um, um, the, the, the private parts as well before that. So you make sure that also the water reaches, reaches that part. So, I mean, am I correct in thinking that washing the right side of the body, all I have to do is wash the front part, I don't need to wash the back? Or do I have to wash the back part as well? Of course, when I said uh, to wash from the shoulder all the way down to the toes of the tips, then it means that you have to wash the whole body, back and front. It doesn't make a difference. Don't you think it's a bit difficult to wipe your back? Or you, you don't just, have to wipe. It's, it's, it's actually mustahab to wipe and rub your, your body while you're doing the ghusl. Oh, okay. You can just apply the shower on your body and you just stand and, and just watch you know, uh -huh. the process of, of, the, of the ghusl without even rubbing any, anywhere. Mm -hmm. As long as the water reaches the skin, that's fine. So you can... Uh, be in the front of the shower, have the front side and then on the back, back of, of your body. 
the water runs through and it will purify the body. So you don't have to actually rub or wipe. So it's it, mustahab. It's a lot easier then to use a shower to do your ghusl and you just stand in front of the shower um, and put the relevant part of your body forward and wiping is not necessary. So therefore, it's, it's probably the most easiest way. But for someone who doesn't have a shower, how would they do it? Is it just going to be pouring water non-stop over themselves? Yes, they can pour water uh, with a small cup or anything else. And that, this is how it was, I think, in the time of the, the, the Prophet and his family, peace upon them, in the old times. They didn't have running water like us today, mm. no taps. It, it was well water, uh, bucket water, and so forth. So they, I think in that time they used to use some kind of uh, uh, buckets to, to wash, mm. to do the ghusl, and so forth. So they used to pour water on their head and then do the ghusl. And they consumed less water than today's world. You see, uh, I mentioned this uh, the, uh, with regard to the wudu, that uh, the ghusl is almost three kilograms. If I mentioned this in the okay, last... Okay, so about three liters episode. roughly. Ex yeah. Exactly. So, this is the sunnah of the Prophet that he used to wash, he used to do wudu with, with 750 grams of water mm -hmm. and almost three kilograms of water for the ghusl. Yes. But today's world, we see people Five, who just, ten. you know, let the water to go, running water for Gallons. maybe half an hour to do the ghusl sometimes. Indeed. So the sunnah is to follow uh, the Prophet in this way. And um, of course, with regard to uh, the ghusl itself as a purifying process um, for the one that he needs to consider Many issues, um, inshallah, will come one by one with regard to the ghusl ahkam. That if, if there's an obstacle, if there's particles on the body, uh, what if I, for example, uh, just washed my head and, and neck and, and went out? Can I actually, is it sequential, like the wudu, mm -hmm. continuous? Is there a time frame to it? Exactly, as well? exactly, yeah. Shaykhna, what about the tartib? Do I have to do the head left and right? Can I do the right, left, then the head, or? Head left and right. You should follow the sequence again. Um, you start with the head and the neck, and then you go to the right section of the body. You do it, and then the left section of the body. The, following the sequence is is mandatory. You have to follow this this way. But why I I, I spoke about was the timing itself, the gap. Mm -hmm. Can I leave a gap? Yes, you can leave a gap. You can wash your head and neck, and you go out of the bathroom. You have a rest. Let's say somebody knocks the door. You open the door, and then you come back, and then you you, you do the right side of the body. You wash it, and then you do the left, and you complete the, the ghusl. So the, the time gapping is not mandatory. That you have to reserve preserve the time gap between each part of the of the ghusl. So you can actually let it off. You go and have a coffee or watch TV, and then come back and finish the ghusl. But as I've, as I've said, it's better. To, for the one who goes inside the bathroom to finish off the ghusl straight away and without consuming much water again it's against the Prophet Sunnah as I've mentioned and uh, basically not to waste that much of water and time as well because you know time and, and, and water wastage at the same time and stick with the uh, the way of the Sharia the Sunnah as prescribed Shaykhna, you've mentioned the method of tartibi um, ghusl. What about the irtimasi ghusl? How is that done? What's the, what's the method? Now, the ghusl of irtimasi or the, the diving, the immersion way of the ghusl is for the one again to do the niyyah that I want to do ghusl, irtimasi. And they can just dive inside a, a pond or, or the seaside even or swimming pool or anywhere else that um, there's enough water available for the one to go inside and to cover all his body inside the water. So when he does the knee and he goes inside, he must make sure that all the body is inside. Uh, there's no part of the body outside the water which was not actually washed. So all in one go, the body should be washed uh, by one dive inside the water and that will be uh, achieving uh, the Ghusul of Artemasi which is a lot lot less time 
uh, than the ghusl of tartibi, which takes more time a bit. Because it's just one dive and you come out. That might take only less than 10 seconds. Does it, does it, when you say dive, do I actually have to dive in? Or can I just walk in until the water is probably about to hit, make my near duck under, come up? Is that enough? Well, it's just that you have to go inside the water by one go. You do the near and you stay inside the water for a few seconds to achieve that uh, Full, fully immersing the, the fully immersing in and yeah. getting that the ghusl done and then you come out straight away and you've mm -hmm. done the ghusl very straightforward easy for those who don't really want to you know stand under the shower and some people have th that kind of doubts oh is it is it done the left side the, the right side did i do the right side so uh Sheikhna, when um when we go to the bathroom, we normally, you know, we have no clothes on and that's, we, we can perform the ghusl quite easy. However, if we're near a river or by the ocean, um, we're wearing shorts or some, some of us might be fully covered wearing a surfer outfit. Um, can we do ghusl then? I mean, if, if what we're wearing is uh, not waterproof, the water can go through it and touch our skin. Does that count as ghusl? Is that okay? Or do you have to actually take all your clothes off? As I've said, the main um, aim of the ghusl is to make sure that the water reaches the skin. So if the, the water reaches the skin through this fabric that, fabric that you're wearing, that, that, uh, the trunk or whatever you're wearing for the, uh, the swimming, and it reaches the skin, that's fine. You've done uh, the ghusl, uh, all the body was touched by water in that immersion and in that diving, then you have achieved uh, the ghusl of Janaba and you're not pure. What some people do, for example, they might uh, move a bit their trunk or the short, just move it around just to make sure that, the you waters. know, the water actually reached uh, mm -hmm. the, in, the internal parts of the body and to make sure that, uh, you know, the ghusl is done completely. Once I have performed ghusl, tartibi or tamasi, do I not have to perform wudu if I need to pray salah? With regard to the ghusl, which is one of the exceptions in, in the sharia, that if you do ghusl of janaba, be it irtimasi or tartibi, the ghusl of janaba does not require for the one to do wudu again. If you do the ghusl, that's it. Um, you go straight um, for your prayers, you do the prayers, if it's tawaf, you do the tawaf, and so forth. The ghusl of Janaba replaces the wudu itself. So you don't have to actually do wudu again. But if somebody goes after the ghusl of Janaba, he goes to the toilet and he, and he relieves himself, then of course he needs an, a new wudu. Because that will, um, although the ghusl remains the ghusl, nothing breaks the ghusl mm -hmm. except another intercourse or another ejaculation. Okay. But uh, for the wudu, relieving the one's self by urine and so forth will make it wajib for him, for the prayers, to do the wudu. So what you're saying is that those uh, acts which invalidate wudu, will, uh, if, you, if you do one of those when, you're in, uh, when you've done your wajib ghusl janaba, you have to now re-perform the wudu again. Is yes, exactly, saying? exactly. Because how could you enter into the salah? as a obligatory worship and uh, you haven't got the proper purity for that because you've been into the lavatory and you relieved yourself so you have to make sure that you do the wudu the ghusl remains as ghusl you're purified from the ghusl janaba that's fine but just for the purpose of the salah because you have relieved yourself uh, in the bathroom you have to go and do the wudu and then go to the salah but the ghusl is done, that's it. You don't have to do the ghusl again. It's done and you're now purified from the uh, janab. So, Sheikhna, um, what does one do if um, parts of the body were not washed properly or water didn't reach certain parts of the body when performing ghusl? Well, if, if part of the body was not washed and left, let's say even a finger was left and was not washed, the whole ghusl uh, uh, will be bottled and void. So uh, for the one must make sure that when they do ghusl, 
um, they have to make sure that all the body is co covered by water, either in the irtimasi, by diving, or by tartibi, by the sequence that they've made the water to reach all parts of the body. Shagna, I've got a question coming here that was emailed, and it's in regards to what do you do if you have obstacles uh, that prevent water from reaching the body? So if I've got a plaster or paint or oil on my hands or on parts of my body, uh, what happens to the ghusl then? Well, it is mandatory and wajib to remove any obstacles on the body because this ghusl is similar to the wudu as tahara, as purity. So it shares some kind of conditions of the wudu as well in terms of the, uh, the obstacles. So you have to make sure that the body has no, uh, let's say, uh, paint that prevents the reach of water to the skin. Um, there's no plasters, for example, no bandage, anything that um, would op make obstacle the reach of the water to the skin is all removed. It's mandatory. So you have to make sure there's nothing and you can do the ghusl after you've removed all these obstacles. Ahsan, Sheikh. And also, what is the criteria of ghusl? Because, you know, we, we, we talked about beforehand the criteria of wudu, as in the water must be tahir, the, more, the water must be mubah. Um, is it the same for uh, ghusl or is there separate criteria? For him? We mentioned uh, the water must be tahir and pure, not to be impure and najis. Again, with the ghusl, you have to make sure that the water you use is tahr and pure. And the water should not be mixed with something else, like rose water or like orange juice, for example, or lemonade, for example. You can't actually use these types of liquids and water to, to, to actually wash for the ghusl. Uh, likewise, the water must be uh, permissible and not usurped. You have to make sure that the, um, the water that you have, uh, you're using is, is, is been given the permission to be used or um, allowed to be used. Um, otherwise, the ghusl will be battle again, like the, like the wudu, because they are all ibadah at the end of the day. The worship, for the purpose of the worship, so you have to make sure that you achieve all these conditions so you can enter into the ibadah and the worship with complete purity. However, there's a slight difference between the ghusl and the wudu. With regard to the ghusl, you're not really wajib for you to wash from a specific direction. So you can actually wash from bottom to top. Unlike the wudu that has to be from top to bottom. So uh, that is the difference between the ghusl and the wudu here. So you can wash in any direction. That's fine. There's no issue with it. And also with regard to um, the time gapping and, and, and the sequence, you can actually leave, as I mentioned in the beginning of the uh, episode, that you can actually leave a bit of time. So you wash the head and the neck and then you wait. Um, and then you come back and you wash the right side and then you wash the left side and so forth. So there's only main two differences between the ghusl, wudu, ghusl and wudu in these two uh, issues that um, you can actually uh, wash from any direction. And also you can leave gap between each um, act of the ghusl, the head and the body and so forth. And then you can actually um, continue and leave and finish uh, the ghusl at the end in purity, inshallah. Asantum Shaykh, thank you for the elaborate explanation. And thank you to all of you who are joining us uh, for today's discussion. If you have any questions that you'd like to send in, please send them to the contact details provided and inshallah, Sheikhna and I will be able to answer them for you. Until next time, if you're by a river, why not jump in and do a ghusl? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.